Hi everyone, my name is Jacques Stachuna. Today I'm going to teach you about how to use the confusion matrix in Python using scikit-learn. The confusion matrix, what it does is that it measures the quality of predictions from a classification model by using how many predictions are true and how many are false. So essentially what it computes is the true positive, the false positive, the true negatives, and the false negatives. So when we talk about true positive and false positive, uh, true positive, what we're saying is that we have predicted true and it's actually true. So for example, a, we have predicted that someone is sick and that person is actually sick. False positive is when we predicted that it's false and it's actually false. So we've predicted that the person is not sick and is actually not sick. And we have where our predictions are wrong. So we have predicted that it's true and it's false. So we predicted that person is sick and it's not sick. And the false negative, another false case where we've predicted false, but it's true. So we predicted that someone is not sick, but the person is actually sick. So this is what we have. We have a qu quadrant in the confusion matrix where we have the actual values and we have the predicted values. So it, the actual value says that the person is not sick, so negative, or that the person is positive. And when we took the predicted values, so we predicted that person is not sick or person is sick. So in this case, if we have predicted that someone is not sick and that it was actually not sick, then we fall into the first quadrant of true negative where we've predicted that the person is sick, false positive, uh, predicted that person is sick, but the person is actually not sick, that's when we call it a false positive, and so on. So we have these quadrants, and that's what a confusion return. Uh, return. So let's make an example by training a machine learning model. What we're going to do is we have set it up a uh, uh, um, code in order to load breast cancer data set and uh, to train a K neighbors classification to predict malignant or benign cancer. So if we run this, we have an accuracy score that returns 92.9%. Um, so that's, I'm not going into the detail of how to run this. We have uh, posts, articles, and videos about train test split, about K neighbors classifier. And in this case, I just want to show you how to actually uh, compute the confusion matrix from that information. So we import from sklearn metrics. So that's a module in which you will find import confusion matrix. And then in order to compute the confusion matrix, we can see C. CM equals confusion matrix. And the parameters that you will pass is the test Y and the Y prediction. So we have uh, predicted, made a prediction on this. And so we're plotting a confusion matrix using the test and prediction. And we return the confusion matrix here. So we see here that we have an array with two rows. Um, and essentially, this array represents this uh, chart. So what we do here, we can print those results by saying, okay, we have a true negative that the person is not sick, and we see that, okay, 57 are true negative, 7 are true posit false positive, 5 are false negative, and 102 are true, true, uh, are true positives. So we can actually get this information uh, that tells us a little bit more information than just computing the accuracy score of 92%. We can dive, dig deeper into, uh, depending on our context, into some other metrics that can help us make a decision on our model. We can also plot a confusion matrix in a way that is uh, more beautiful. So essentially, to plot it, we assign the labels. So we take the labels and we say, okay, we have the KNN classes. So the classes that are in KNN in this case is the uh, benign 
in malignant cancers. So zeros and one. And then you can return a confusion matrix by seeing CM equal confusion matrix. And we use a white test and white pred to compare to get the true positives. And then we can return a confusion matrix display. So we will use a confusion uh, matrix display class from SKLR metrics to plot the confusion matrix. So we do this confusion matrix display. And all we have to do is we pass the confusion matrix object to the, uh, to the parameter and we use display labels equals labels. And then we can do this plot and then we can add a title and do plot show. And then if we run this, we end up with this beautiful uh, confusion matrix plot that is more visual than the, the array that we just returned. In some cases, we have a multi-class classification. Multi-class classification essentially is when we try to predict more than just two uh, outcomes. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use the one data set uh, and use a random uh, forest classifier and we will return this and if we want to uh, plot this um, plot this confusion matrix that have multiple class then we will use a heat map from seaborn uh, set so again we do cm confusion matrix and y test y pred so we get the confusion matrix and then we use sns the heat map and we do cm and annotation equal true to show the annotation and then we can add x label y label and title and then do plot show and that's what i mean meant by uh doing multiple class classification is that we're trying to predict three classes compare it and we can have a multi-class classification here one last thing to consider here is that the confusion matrix is used whenever the, we are trying to build a classification report so it's not a tutorial on the classification report but i'm going to show you how uh, the confusion matrix so you import classification report and i strongly urge you to go to my next tutorial on the classification report to understand how this works but essentially i just want to show you that you do classification report y test y pred and then you run this and you will see that you get this report which shows precision recall and precision and recall are actually calculated based on those true positives and true negatives and uh, this is uh, how the confusion matrix impacts the classification report so thank you very much please subscribe to my channel and visit my website and thank you and see you next time